places in all our lives, Bye -bye. events that forever alter the paths we take. For me, that was one particular television series. Gilligan's Island. Quiet. That's me, Dawn Wells. It's been almost 40 years since the series began. 40 years. Some kids who watched us back then are still watching, but with their grandchildren now. I mean, the series has never been off the air since, well, since it went off the air. Let me help you with that. Oh, thanks very much. I'm gonna need a stepladder to get to this overhead compartment. <laughs> it's no problem at all. It's the least I can do for Marianne. Thanks very much. You're welcome. Welcome aboard, Miss Wells. Oh, thank you. Would you like something to drink before we take off? Oh, uh, not just yet. How long is the flight scheduled today? We're scheduled to arrive at about seven this evening and about um, three hours. Mm. A three-hour tour. <laughs> Just sit right back and you hear a tale. I grew up on that show. A tale of a fateful trip that started from this tropic port aboard this tiny ship. The mate was a mighty sailing man, skipper brave and sure. I'm not making this up. This actually happened. Twice. A three-hour tour. A three-hour tour. <laughs> Gilligan's Island touched so many people's lives in the most unexpected ways. We actually became part of the national consciousness. And welcome to all of you as well. One Daily Double awaits you in one of these categories. The Skipper. Next we have The Millionaire. Uh-oh. His wife. <laughs> the Movie Star. And the rest, R-E-S-T in quotation marks. We know what that means. And finally, right here on Gilligan's Isle. Now, it's amazing, isn't it? It was just a silly little situation comedy. <laughs> at least that's what we thought at the time. You have to identify the skipper. Ashley, go first. The movie star for 200, please. Faster, Bob, we're losing it. We need more juice. More juice? This is all the juice I got. <laughs> Wonderful thing, aerobics. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, for better or worse, the professor changed my life. And to think I didn't want anything to do with that role at first. <laughs> <sighs> Me? I wanted to do the pilot. I just finished a long run on Dobie Gillis playing Maynard G. Krebs, Mork, a true beatnik with rhythm, like Bongo's man. So I don't think I was exactly the first choice for Gilligan. I heard they were looking at Jerry Van Dyke. That's right, they sent me the script, but I wasn't that crazy about it. All right, I thought it was awful. It's the worst script I'd ever read in my life. And I was looking for a hit, and this year wasn't it. Besides, my agent had me lined up for a surefire hit. A series called My Mother the Car. Guaranteed to last forever. I've had longer showers. Our show has played more often and in more places than any other television series in history. And that includes I Love Lucy. We are playing daily all over the world and in 30 languages. No one would have guessed that in the beginning, including the network. Absolutely the worst idea I've ever heard. No question. The worst. Seven people on an island week after week. How many stories could you get out of that? Uh, two, three? Who'd ever watch something like that? I'll tell you who'd watch it. Nobody. That's who. Uh, I disagree, respectfully. Look, I I've been doing comedy now for... We know your background. Skelton, Hope, the Emmy and all. You're a funny guy. But, but when it comes right down to it, you're, you're just a writer. <laughs> we're the network. You have to trust we know what we're talking about, Sherwood. Sherwood Schwartz was the creator and producer of the show. The same guy that came up with the Brady Bunch a few years later. A huge talent. You'd think the network would listen to him. They had just gotten a taste of power. There's a story there. It has something to do with that little boat we set sail on. You remember the name of it? Uh-huh, the SS Minnow. Most of you probably assume that the minnow referred to a small fish. <laughs> Actually, it was a private joke on Sherwood Schwartz's part. 
Back in the early 60s, many of the most popular television shows were designed only to entertain. A strange intersection in the Shadowland Club, the Twilight Zone. You're the first time traveler in the history of man. What do you want people to see Americans as? Newton Minow was the FCC chairman at the time. And the irony is, he didn't even like television. But when television is bad, nothing is worse. I invite you to sit down in front of your television set when your station goes on the air and keep your eyes glued to that set until the station signs off. I can assure you, you will observe a vast wasteland. A vast wasteland? Ouch. His solution was to have the networks take more control of what they put on the air. <laughs> and they did. So what you're saying is, you know comedy. Look at our track record. <laughs> we just don't understand what this is. They understood Gomer Pyle and they understood the Beverly Hillbillies, but this concept escaped them? Don't get us wrong. We like the boat, the whole uh, cruise business idea. It's different, fresh. Well, good, great, then let's go ahead. But, but what if every week it's another trip, uh, uh, different passengers, uh, uh, guest stars? Actually, they might have been onto something, but the love boat was still years away. That's not my series. You see, these people have to be stranded, so they're forced to become a family, depend on one another. What I had in mind was to create a social microcosm. Uh, a what? A social microcosm. Seven castaways representing different parts of society today. The hardworking middle class kind of guy, the, the millionaire, the intellectual. Intellectual? See, see, that concerns us. You're a, you're a aiming too high, Sherwood. If we wanted Plato, we would have hired Plato. <laughs> you could try, but trust me, you couldn't afford him. Sorry, not our kind of show, but uh, try us again. Okay, so if the criticism was that there weren't enough possible plots, he'd prove them wrong. Sherwood came up with dozens, more than a season's worth. To make sure they knew it was a comedy, he had to find the right title. I mean, would you have watched if it was called Mortimer's Island or, you know, Ichabod's Island? No. Well, it could have been, considering where he found the name. Abernathy. No. Dunderson. Not funny. Eventually, he got to the G's. Huh. Gilligan. Gilligan. Gilligan's Island. Well, it certainly sounds funny. That's because it is. And, uh, here are a few plots, just to get the ball rolling. 31 feet of them. Hmm. Well, <laughs> that's very impressive, uh, Sherwood. Uh, uh, these are all storylines you developed? That's and, right. And you've got 31? <laughs> you know, this I actually be, did those little This could be another wow. big hit, like uh, Dobie Gillis. Good. Bye bye, dear island. Faced with the answers for every question they had, the network agreed to make a pilot episode. They gave it what's called a green light. I wasn't on the first cruise, that original episode, and neither was Dawn and neither was Tina Louise. Well, there wasn't even a character named Marianne at first. It was somebody named Bunny. Bob, on the other hand, was the first and only Gilligan. It was pure entertainment. Pure silly fun, the kind of thing I love to do. <laughs> and Sherwood and I found common ground right from the start. That's me with the book. Well, okay, it's an actor playing me, but well, you get the idea. Robinson Crusoe, my favorite story growing up. So is this where the idea came from? Who knows where ideas come from? They just suddenly appear. The trick is spotting them when they show up at your door. Could I do physical comedy in this show? Oh, sure, I'm counting on it. 
I mean real slapstick, pratfalls, double takes. I've never had the chance to do all that. Oh, other than Lucy, there's really nothing on TV like it these days. Besides, we need more clowns. Here, I'll tell you what. Take this, read it, and let me know what you think. What can I say? I've always had a strange sense of humor. <laughs> Sherwood had already thought of Jim Backus and Natalie Schaefer, and Nancy McCarthy played the part of the secretary, Bunny. John Gabriel had the role of the high school teacher. I heard that Jane Mansfield turned down the part of Ginger, hmm. but Kit Smythe soon landed that role. The trick was finding the right skipper. You see, the problem is the audience has got to love the guy. Even though he keeps blowing up at Gilligan, hitting him with his hat all the time. Like Abbott was always beating up on Costello. Like Hardy was with Laurel. You see, the skipper's got to be big. He's got to be lovable. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, uh, what about that uh, Carol O'Connor? Gave a good reading? Terrific actor, but just not quite right. Carol O'Connor later got to do his blowing up as Archie Bunker and All in the Family. He was a great Archie, but can you imagine him playing the skipper? Neither can I. Without the skipper, you've got no show. All I'm saying is we need somebody like, like, uh, <laughs> like that guy. This is the only movie I've done this year. All right, look, things don't pick up soon. I'm changing careers. Maybe real estate. I'm serious. U.S. trinket here. Hey, last time it was like this, I sold vacuum cleaners. I was pretty good at it, too, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Real estate should be a piece of cake. <laughs> Sherwood had a hunch that Alan Hale was the guy, but the networks insisted on a screen test. The problem was, Alan was doing a Western on location in Utah, and the producers would not let him leave. Listen, I'll be back tonight before anybody even knows I'm gone. So, on the day of the test, he and a friend borrowed some horses and rode off to the nearest main road. Where are you headed? Hey, I need to get to Vegas. Hop in. He hitched a ride to Vegas, caught a plane to Los Angeles, and took a cab to the studio. He went through four states to get to that screen test that day. Ah. Anyone up for a screen test today? <laughs> Alan, I'm glad you could make it. I hope it was no trouble. No, not at all. Hey, I love the script, by the way. Classic. Nobody's doing this kind of comedy anymore. It's about time, I say. I like your attitude. You like my attitude? I like your show. Hey, and as for playing the skipper of a cruise ship, I'm a Pisces. <laughs> That's a water sign. It's fate. Well, I hope you're right. Uh, we'll be doing this scene today, and you'll be reading with Bob Denver. Uh, Bob, Alan Hale Jr. We're looking for that elusive thing called chemistry. Skipper! <laughs> well, hey, little buddy. <laughs> There was no question, he was the skipper. And before we knew it, we were on our way to location, Hawaii. To get the right look, this was going to be an expensive shoot. The Gilligan's Island! Well, I can't wait to read the script. Oh, Jim, you haven't read it yet? Oh, if it's good enough for Sherwood, it's good enough for me. Well, you might want to take a look. I mean, it's just dreadful. 
it's a comedy. Yeah, it's broad, but it's fun. Yeah. Matter of opinion, I suppose. It may not be Shakespeare. But uh, it I certainly can't... isn't, and I have played Shakespeare. Come on, Miss Schaefer. If you didn't like the script, then why'd you sign on? Well, it's a free trip to Hawaii, and I know I'll never have to move from my home in New York because there isn't a chance that this is going to be a series. So, I'm here for the vacation. Lovely attitude, Natalie. You'll agree <laughs> as soon as you read the pages. It's mindless. Oh. <laughs> she had a point, I suppose. But it takes a little while for her cast to become a family. <laughs> that was the point of the whole series, too. So, with some division in the ranks, we went to work filming. The network hired writers to add four minutes of material to the script, and Sherwood was hard at work trying to make those new scenes fit into his concept. And the rest of us, we all just did the best we could. Good Lord. You were right. In my part, the wine list at the hotel is longer. Next time, maybe you'll listen to me. Yeah, well, still, I mean, it's a check. We'll get Sherwood to fix it up. What he doesn't do, we'll do ourselves. Hmm? We'll fix it? Yeah, we'll add some jokes. Add lib a little. I don't know how to add lib. Oh, well, better for me. What? Oh, nothing, nothing to worry about. I'll teach you. You'll be outdoing me in no time. I mean, <laughs> I mean <laughs>, laughs a plenty. Yeah. You act as if the whole world's a joke. Well, being funny is the most important thing in the world to me. Now, without laughter, there's nothing. All right, now, let's see. Lovey. <laughs> what, do you use those things to look imperious? I use them to see. Well, you know, they're good for the character. You should leave them in. Lovey. Ginger Grant started Somehow, we got through it. Right down to the last couple of days. The castaways had salvaged their radio and found that the search for them had been called off. You mean we're stuck here? Forever? This is no time to panic, Gilligan. It's not forever. It's just that we can figure our way off. And who is going to figure that? Well, as the skipper and the first mate, it's up to Gilligan and me. Good Lord. Lovey, we are stuck here forever. <laughs> is now a good time to panic? <sighs> Gilligan. <laughs> And cut! <laughs> oh, <laughs> help me up, Jim, please. Are you stuck okay. sand on my feet again? Sore, but it was another radio report, a real one, that brought the production to a halt. We have just received word the President of the United States, John F. Kennedy, is dead. As a result of the wounds he suffered earlier today, when he was shot as his motorcade drove through the streets of Dallas, Texas. We have word that the Vice President, Lyndon Johnson, is being sworn in at this time. No question, we all remember where we were when we heard the news. We finished shooting as best we could, but no one was in a comic mood flying home. Gilligan, no! Watch out for the... Skipper! <laughs> well, it's rough, of course, but it gives you the idea. Doesn't it? Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was rejected not once but three times <laughs> but Sherwood never took no for an answer and that ending was just the beginning Sherwood wouldn't give up. With only two weeks to go before the fall schedule was announced, he called in some favors. He got the original film footage back, began to re-edit it his way. 
without the scenes the network added. If we cut out the opening, you're going to be short. And nobody's going to know how these people got on the island. Oh, they'll know. I've already figured a way to handle that. Sherwood wanted an opening sequence that told the audience every week what the setup was. And he realized the way to do that was with a song. So he called on George Weil, a friend and composer. Okay. Let, let's try it again, George, with the new lyrics, right? Just sit right back and you'll hear a tale. That's better. That's better, but where does it go from there? Just sit right back and you'll hear a tale A tale of a fateful trip That started from this tropic port Aboard this tiny ship The mate was a mighty sailing man A skipper brave and sure Five passengers set sail that day For a three-hour tour A three-hour tour Armed with this re-edited version of the pilot Complete with new title, sequence, and song He had the courage to take Gilligan's Island back to the network. Sherwood, come in, come in. Nice to see you. How have you been? How are you? Oh, I'm fine. I'm fine. You're only making it worse, Gilligan. How could it be worse? <laughs> oh, I see. Gilligan! They still didn't get it, but they figured they might as well do a test screening. Well, the test audience loved it. The network was puzzled. They figured there had to be a mistake. <laughs> so they had another group in. And another. Skipper! <laughs> oh, not again. It was the highest testing pilot of the season. We uh, don't understand it, Sherwood, but the... Uh... Audience seems to. <laughs> We're sure it won't last past the first 13, but the bottom line is you've got a series. Great. If. If? We need to do some recasting. Ginger, Bunny, and the high school teacher, they didn't score well with the audience. But if you can find us the right new actors, then you've got a show. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. About this time, Natalie Schaefer was in Puerto Vallarta with some friends. Oh, it'll do you good to get out of New York for a while. You need the rest. Oh, I know it, but I just have this terrible feeling leaving my mother this way. She hasn't been at all well. Okay, think about it. You are just a few hours away by plane. She'll be fine. Senora. Oh, no. Is that for me? Senora. Now, Natalie, Senora. come on. It could be good news. A telegram is never good news, and you know it. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Oh, is it your mother? Don't worry, because we will get you back. No, it's not my mother. It's much, much worse. The series, it's sold. Oh, Here's where I came in. They had to recast Ginger the Professor and Mary Ann, formerly Bunny. <laughs> I'm sure glad they changed that name. So there I was, me and 300 other girls hoping to get one of the two open roles. One of them, believe it or not, was Raquel Welch. And she wasn't up for Ginger. She was up for Mary Ann. My part. Uh, you were Miss Nevada, I see. In the Miss America pageant, yes. And a dancer. Well, I always wanted to be a ballerina. I trained for it, but I have this trick knee. Oh, a uh, trick knee, so... You fell back on acting, literally. That's right. <laughs> That's funny. I like that. You can have it. My gift. 
Uh, it's actually a very impressive uh, list of uh, credentials for only having been here a year. You've got uh, Burke's Law, Wagon Train, um, and it says here that you played a, a treasurer. No, I was a treasurer of my student body in school uh, and a member of the debate team. I majored oh. in chemistry at Stevens College. I was going to go into medicine, uh, but then I discovered the drama club, so I went to the University of Washington so that I could... Uh, that's really more than you needed to know, isn't it? <laughs> you just might be too smart for this role. Oh, no, I'm not. I mean, I can play not. So smart, not so smart? I talk too much and too fast. It could work for us. I like it. Well, he didn't like it quite so much later. Bob and I talked so fast, the show kept coming in short. <laughs> hmm. I didn't even want to audition at first. I was working in films. I mean, let them hire Dabney Coleman, a wonderful actor. He auditioned for The Professor, too. But this part, if one of seven, just wasn't for me. But my agent finally convinced me to at least read for it. What could that hurt, I figured. This island Earth, attack of the crab monsters, it came from outer space. Yeah, I did a few science fiction pictures and some westerns. Yeah, I caught you in the one with um, Ronald Reagan. You were very good. Thanks. Look, I don't want to waste your time. I'm really only here because my Alfred agent... Alfred Hitchcock, Ben Casey, Gunsmoke... A couple of Twilight Zones. You know, I caught those. You were amazing, Russell. Quite a talent. Yeah? And exactly the look for the professor. Handsome, strong. Well, thanks, again. How about reading a scene for us? Sure, Mr. Schwartz. I've been waiting to get a series of my own. But there are some people you just can't say no to, and he was one of them. My original conclusion was correct. The network wanted me to take my shirt off for them before they'd approve me. We settled on a photo. And you thought they wanted me for my mind. <laughs> oh, this certainly brings back old memories. <laughs> so now they had Marianne and the professor. Now they had to find Ginger, the movie star. Tina Louise was co-starring in a Broadway musical at the time. It's from Hollywood, the island thing, and it's everything we ask for. Somebody out there definitely wants you. But it's still a TV show. You can always come back to the theater and movies. There's plenty of time for that. Listen to your agent, Tina. This is the kind of thing that can make you a household name. Your own series. I'm definitely the star. It's about an actress who gets stranded in the middle of the Pacific with, I don't know, some other people, nobody important. You play the actress. Sexy, glamorous. But here I'm starring on Broadway with Carol Burnett. The difference is that in this show, Everybody else is starring with you. My own series. Mm -hmm. I'd like to have heard the conversation she had with her agent after she read the script. But I remember the first day around the table at CBS. <laughs> Ginger Crand is barely in the script at all. And she doesn't get any of the laughs. Sherwood? Well, uh, keep in mind, there are seven of you on the island. Yes, but I was told this was my island. My show, I'm the star. You're the star? Of Gilligan's Island? Tina, he's Gilligan. Didn't you find that odd, dear? Might that have been a clue? I have to call my agent. I don't know. She might make a better Gilligan. <laughs> <laughs> and you would make a lovely ginger, Bob. No, the right wig, right dress. Ooh, ravishing. 
I think Tina regretted taking the show, but to give her credit, she was a total pro, the perfect ginger. And we all got on with the job at hand. If I'm going to be just another castaway, I'm going to make sure all eyes are on me. Can't we lower these necklines a little more? You can try, sweetheart, but it'll never get past network sensors. They want glamour. This is glamour. Uh, maybe so, but I don't think television's ready for those yet. <laughs> oh, you look great, Tina. Oh, lose the bangs, huh? Excuse me? Ginger wears bangs. Find something else. Oh, well, it's not like anyone would really ever confuse the two of us. Just lose them, okay? Thanks. What is she talking about? That won't do, that outfit. Barbara Eden will have the same problem on I Dream of Jeannie. What problem is that? The navel. No one on television has one. Oh, you've got to be kidding. Oh, she's not. It was a big deal way back then, believe it or not. Excuse me. I don't mean to be interrupting, but I just can't stand there and watch this. No navel. Oh. Now you can deal with it. Besides, she'll make you a pair that'll cover it. Ah. Tina was right about the hair. Oh, but this is the way I've always worn it. Oh, you don't have to tell me. You took quite a while to figure out that look way back then. This is a two-hour movie of the week. And I've got coconut pie in the oven. Let's cut to the chase. You're sure? It's going to grow on you. <laughs> the guys didn't have the same problems. Hair, navels, not even what to wear. Must have been a sale at the marina. So, what'll it be today? <laughs> oh, well, the blue shirt or the blue shirt? Okay. We were finally a group, the seven of us. And we all gathered for our first official publicity shots. We took some of them around the lake and the Hollywood Hills. And if you look closely at those photos, you can see the pine trees in the background. Not exactly a typical tropical island. The California beaches were too foggy and too unreliable for shooting. So, CBS built us a lagoon on the back lot, a half a mile from the freeway. Did you know it was only four feet deep? And in the winter, it was freezing? Oh, poor Bob. Poor Bob is right, because it was usually Gilligan who ended up doing the water gags. It wasn't always as fun as it looked. I think I spent more time underwater than Flipper. Okay, Bob, Alan, we need you both in the water. What are you doing? Shh. I took this from the prop card. I don't think they want us to know how cold it really is. Come on, Bob, it's California. How cold could it be? It's 42 degrees. It's not that cold. For a penguin, maybe. Or for you, you got a couple inches of insulation, remember? Guys, in the lagoon, please. Uh, uh, yeah, coming right up. Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. Come on, no, little buddy. No, no, oh, Alan, no, no, come on, no. Don't. Oh, come on, no, Bob, it's all going to be no, fine for a minute. Wait, wait, wait. You see that, Tina? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, oh, my. Oh, this is a good one. Oh, no. No, no. 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 I tried wearing a wetsuit under my clothes once, but well, even that didn't help. And in the summer, that lagoon got so funky that one day when we put a fish in it just to see...
him, I don't blame you. No, it's okay. I'm going in. You're joking. Right after one of those network big shots goes for a swim. Do I need to tell you how quickly that water got changed? Anything for our star. Hollywood? I was like a kid around all of this. I'd done several roles on television by then, but I was still just a girl from Reno. And I guess from time to time, it showed. Like after the first episode aired. Variety says, judging from the opening episode, there was some difficulty in seeing how to make this one joke go as far as one episode. <laughs> Listen to this one from the L.A. Tribune. Gilligan's Island is not the worst show of this television season. It's the worst show of any television season. <laughs> it is difficult for me to believe that Gilligan's Island was written, directed, and filmed by adults. John? You okay? Are you? The reviews are awful. But the ratings are great. Didn't you see them? These are good. Haven't you ever seen ratings before? No. Well, trust me, everybody hated us but the audience. There's just so much to learn about this business. You'll figure it out in no time. I did. And you know how I started? I played a nervous officer in a college play, but the nerves were real. I was terrified. <laughs> the more I shook, the more they laughed, and I was hooked. My first TV show, Dobie Gillis. That was your first? Right place at the right time. I'm almost as new to all this as you are. Bob, gone. We've been picked up for 23 more episodes this season. The network loves us? Are you kidding? They hate us. They don't understand us. They think we're a fluke. But they can't deny that we're a hit. <laughs> Improbable as it seemed, we were a hit. But that didn't make it any easier behind the scenes. The network still didn't understand us and kept trying to fix the show. Well, you won't believe this one, Bob. They think Gilligan should have a pet, a dinosaur. A dinosaur? Where would I get a dinosaur? I don't know. I guess it's been living on the other side of the island or something. Are they kidding? Couldn't even get us in the same two shot. Look, you gotta talk them out of it. Trust me. They'll talk themselves out of it when they see what it would cost. I just got the figures. Uh, it would have cost them $75,000 a minute. Bye-bye dinosaur. But no question, uh, Sherwood still had his hands full. We're waiting, Tina, the cast, the crew. If Ginger Grant is a movie star and I'm playing her, then shouldn't her makeup be perfect? Is that a shadow? And did you get my new eyelashes, the mink ones? Mink? Mink eyelashes? It's not for me, Sherwood. It's for the show. I just want to look my best. Doesn't everybody? Okay, here's how it'll go. Tina, Ginger runs in from camera left. We all know the natives are out there. No one else has any idea. Until Tina tells them, the headhunters are coming, the headhunters are coming. So, she's sort of a Paula Revere? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should stick to the yeah. script today, Jim. Honestly. He should have told him that ten episodes ago. Well, hey, <laughs> comedy is a serious business. I mean, without the laughter, laughter, there's nothing. nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I can't do what you're asking. It's not my good side. I need to enter from camera right. Tina, everything's set up. The lights, the camera's going to take us a week to relight. I mean, come, please, come on. We've talked about this. I only want my left side on screen. Look, just... Please. Do it this way. I promise you'll look great. Run it once for me, please. Please. Thank you. And rehearsal's up, everybody. 
And action. Run, everybody. The headhunters are coming. The headhunters are coming this way. <laughs> Is everybody happy? Shoot it. I thought it was good. Nice work, fellas. All right. Is everybody happy? We all had our idiosyncrasies. Natalie Schaefer's contract specified no close-ups, ever. But once we got into the series, she never paid much attention to it. Uh, she did have this thing about her age, though. Until the day she died, no one knew how old she was. Not even me. Please, even my doctor doesn't know. <laughs> even your doctor. But why should he? If he asks, I tell him to refer to the charts for my last visit. By the time he realizes that I hadn't told him then either, I'm gone. <laughs> it's actually brilliant. Well, people talk too much about age these days. When you go in for a part, it's always... Is she 20? Never is she good. I was married once to Lewis Calhoun. Oh, wonderful actor. Oh, and a wonderful husband. But even he didn't know my real age. No. On his deathbed, his last wish was that I would tell him how old I was. I said, never. Quite frankly, too many people are just too nosy these days. It's no one's business. So... You have a husband, do you, Dawn? Yes. Oh, that's lovely. Is the sex good? Oh, oh, don't pay any attention to me. I can be something of a bitch. She became my mentor, and I guess I became the daughter she never had. Just as Sherwood wanted the castaways to do, we were becoming a family. Sometimes a bit dysfunctional, maybe, but a family. We actually had a lot of fun. That was the day Tina had to shoot a shower scene. Hi, boys. Hi, Miss Boyce. Hello, Hi, Tina. And since the bamboo door would hide her from the shoulders down, she announced she'd be shooting the scene nude. Good, Tina. Not a single crewman called in sick that day. Okay, go on. Okay, Tina. You take your place. We'll get the shot. Guys, let's have it quiet, please. Rehearsal's up! <clears throat> and action. Tina outsmarted him that time. When Jim and Alan realized they both loved golf, they became inseparable. Hello. Not bad for a duffer. <laughs> well, I suppose you could do better. Oh, on my worst day. Uh, here, here, here. Let me show you how a pro does it, huh? Well, talk is cheap. And so is his club. <laughs> Bacchus, I got 20 bucks says I can drive a ball farther than you with that club. What, are you challenging me to a duel? Today at lunch. Even better. I'll be awake for it. Yay! <laughs> All right, we're going to need a referee. Natalie, would you do the honors? Oh, Alan, I don't know anything about sports. Just... Hit it through the goalposts and be done with it. You heard the lady. Batter up. I'd be happy to. Okay. It's only twenty dollars. <clears throat> Just relax. Swing easy. Oh, very nice. Beat that. Well, in here I thought it might at least be a challenge. <laughs> 
I think the winner is clear. Well, it's nice of you to admit it. I clearly outdrove you. Outdrove me? What, are you blind, man? <laughs> yeah, I think those years of playing Magoo have gotten to you, Bacchus. Hey, hey, you. Hey, Bob, just be gentle and tell the man. They look the same to me. Who can oh, really tell from here? <laughs> look, we're missing our lunch break. There's a simple way to decide this. Just go track down your golf ball. <laughs> Way over there? It's a long hike. Hey, I know. Why don't you just admit that I won? Marcus, I would if I did, but you didn't. Just hand me my 20 bucks. You the guys hitting golf balls? Well, these aren't baseball bats. Why do you ask? Somebody drove a ball through a car windshield in the parking lot. That far? He outdrove me by a mile. Shame on you. <laughs> So, things were going along pretty well. Even Tina was happier on the set. She was engaged at the time to Les Crane Jr. Thanks. He was a talk show host. Actually, one of the pioneers of that kind of thing. Oh, well. Nice car. Night, boys. See you tomorrow. Good night, dear. Night on. Take care. That's her boyfriend? Uh huh? He's as beautiful as she is. No wonder they're getting married. But if they ever divorce, who'll get custody of the mirror? <laughs> Natalie? Well, you're usually gone by now. Late date tonight. A date? Oh, dear, you know I don't date anymore. Not romantically. <sighs> but you're out almost every night with one handsome man or another. But they're mostly all gay. Just good company. That's all I need for now. Don't tell me you've given up on love. After all the men you've known, you're infamous. I've had my day, that's true. But uh, my romantic nights, they're all in the past. Why would you give something like that up? Well, that's a private matter. Shouldn't you be off to dinner yourself? I was just going to grab a hot dog. <laughs> a hot dog? Are they good? I don't believe I've ever had one. Well, my dear, it's the best meal I've ever had. Yeah. At least what I've tasted so far. I think I'm wearing far more than I've eaten. People are looking. Not because of how we're eating. Because I think they recognize us. Mrs. Howell and Mary Ann out on the town. I didn't get this much attention from all the movies I've been in. Oh, but you've had a wonderful career. But in this town, you're only as good as the last thing you've done. Memories are short. Really? After all the great parts you've played? I had this meeting once. Some network boy who had just recently graduated to long pants. <laughs> I was up for some role and he wanted to meet me fine. So he looked at my picture and said, Tell me, Miss Schaefer, what have you done? Well, I looked at him and said, You first. <laughs> did, did he tell you? Oh, yes. Oh, they love to talk about this school they went to and that job they had and this office they're in. Oh, he went on and on. And I nodded politely. And when he finished, I said, thank you. And I left. It's not like the old days. Excuse me. Ice cream, my favorite. But we didn't order these. They're on me, please. I have... Such a big fan. I've seen everything you've ever done. Everything? Oh, my. Where's your husband tonight? My husband? Well, he's dead. Jim Backus is dead? Oh, no, not Jim. My husband. 
We're not married, dear. It's pretend. People honestly believed that Jim and Natalie were a couple on and off the screen. Jim's wife, Henny, always referred to Natalie as Jim's other wife. But that is not the strangest story. The first year we were on, some people got so caught up in the show that they apparently thought we were all real people, trapped on a real island. Look at these, Mr. Schwartz. Dozens of telegrams and letters we're getting at military bases all around the Pacific. With all the money we spent on foreign aid, can we not spare one U.S. ship to rescue those poor souls before they starve to death? They're serious about this? They're all the same. They're all worried about these castaways of yours. Don't these people wonder about the credits? And how about the laugh track? And how many castaways have their own theme song? <laughs> With Gilligan, the skipper too. The millionaire, and his wife, the movie star, and the rest. Stop! Please rewind that. Just the last part. Sarah and the rest. For the first season, Russell Johnson and I were literally the rest. Oh, we had our pictures up there, true, but no real billing. I found out later how all that changed. The credits? What's wrong with them? Don and Russell are just as much a part of the show as the rest of us. They should get equal billing. It's what's in their contracts. It would cost too much to change it now. Well, in my contract, I get to pick my billing, right? Then just put me at the end with Don and Russell. Make me part of the rest, too. But uh, uh, you're the star. <laughs> we need you at the top. Only one way to make sure it stays that way. The Professor and Marianne here on Gilligan's Island. <laughs> Woo! Music to my ears. You know, I often wondered, who got the most fan mail? It was Gilligan, right? No question who got the most fan mail. Mary Ann, hands down. This is just unreal. You wouldn't believe the date this guy has planned for himself and Ginger. Hmm. I may save this one. You get all the mash notes. I get the kids and their parents. And so many marriage proposals. Well, I only want dates. Marianne is safe. Okay. The girl next door is someone you could bring home to mother. While Ginger is... Well, Ginger. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> oh, yeah. We definitely get different fans. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> For years, men have engaged in the Marianne-Ginger debate. Ginger. Ginger. Marianne. Marianne, still, in my heart. I'd say Marianne. Ginger. Marianne. 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 Ginger. Marianne! Ginger. Ginger! Ginger. Oh, Marianne, hands down. Ginger. Ginger. Marianne. Definitely Marianne. Go with Marianne. Ginger, definitely. Ginger? Ginger. Marianne. <laughs> Marianne now. Most polls taken tend to favor Marianne, but it was pretty clear who the magazines were after. They wanted Gilligan and Ginger, nobody else. Uh, I had a problem with that. I won't do it. Mr. Denver, this is a cover for TV Guide. This could make your show a hit. You should read your own magazine. We're already a hit. But you have a problem posing with Tina Louise? Yes. I mean, no. I mean, I'm working with Tina and Don Wells every day. I just think it should be the three of us. So that's your bottom line? The three of you or? Or no photos. Then that's how we'll shoot it. 
Can we do this, please? Be right there. Perfect. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Now if we can just get you in next to Bob. Nice and cozy. Mm. And where do you want me? Anywhere's fine, whatever's comfortable. If we could just lose the hands. Oh, okay. <laughs> Don't I need more makeup? You had me take so much off. Well, you're fine, kid. You're Mary Ann. Sweet and natural. Mm. They're all yours. Okay. Smile, please. <laughs> Very nice. Did you see the cover yet? <laughs> Is it here? Let me see. <laughs> My first cover. I'm sorry, Don. If I had any idea what they were doing... This is all that's left of me? corner of my ponytail? They lied to us. They used what they thought could sell magazines. Doesn't this make you mad? Well, of course. But you have to be careful how you react in public, Bob. Look, you're a family for the audience, and they love the seven of you. So if you're going to get mad at one another, you have to get mad with love. It's a nice sentiment, Sherwood, but easier said than done. Did you read this interview with Tina, what she said? Some of it. I'd heard what a series is like, but I really didn't know how it would be. I found that I couldn't use, use my, my work, work at all in this show. It was quite a shock. Well, what exactly do you mean? Acting is acting, isn't it? Television is different. In this medium, you perform. Everyone performs. There's no such thing as a real moment, an honest reaction. Because the show is like a cartoon. You're being a little hard on your hit series, aren't you? All I can say is it's not acting. Not the way I studied it anyway. I wouldn't watch it if I wasn't on it. Lucky for us, a lot of people were watching. And still are. Where did all the wardrobe come from? I mean, it was only a three-hour tour. What sort of question is that? Why, the Howells pack a dozen bags for an afternoon picnic at Newport. We like to be prepared for any eventuality, don't we, darling? Oh, yeah. And movie stars, well, it's not who you are. It's how you dress. So I never go anywhere without a couple of gowns. But only the essentials, of course. Oh, I won this trip. So I just had what I brought with me from Kansas. My short shorts, my gingham dressed fake pies, and, and a few other outfits. How come the professor could make anything out of bamboo and coconuts, but he couldn't fix a hole in the boat? I never thought of that. Did you, Marianne? Hey, what kind of professor are you, anyway? If you were trapped on a deserted island with Ginger and Marianne, would you want to fix the boat? Well, when you put it that way... <laughs> hey, you know, the man has a point. <laughs> oh, good answer, professor. <laughs> Ooh. Professor. Speaking of answers, I found that Gilligan's Island trivia is a big thing wherever I go. The professor's real name, for example. Um, professor Throckmorton. Professor Russell, no, that's his real name, isn't it? Russell Johnson. Sean. Steve. Walter. Smiley Burnett. It was Roy Hinckley. And the skipper was? Skipper Howe. Roy? I don't. Roy! What? Oh, Roy. Aaron. Um, not a clue. Skip it. Adam Bruce. <laughs> don't know. Jonas Grumby? But who knows what Gilligan's first name was? Gilligan? Gilligan. I have not the foggiest notion. He was just Gilligan. I don't, I don't remember him having a first name. Buddy. My little buddy. I thought Gilligan was his first name. His first name is Willie. Sherwood's right. He said if it ever came up, Gilligan's first name would be Willie. Bob Denver thinks his first name was Gilligan. I say it's Willie. And we argue about that to this day. Willie Gilligan? Who knew? Alan was probably the most excited about all the attention the series got. He loved his part so much that he wore his cap everywhere, even long after the show was canceled. There we go. Hi. 
What's your name? His wife Trinket says that he even called her his little buddy. We were all thrilled to be recognized. Well, most of us. What? Excuse me. I'm, I'm really sorry to interrupt, but aren't you Ginger? No. I'm Tina. I mean, from Gilligan's Island. No, I'm from New York. Oh, I'm so sorry. I, uh, I thought you were somebody else. I'm not. When my contract is up, I am out of there, and I hope I never hear the name Ginger again for as long as I live. <sighs> now we can eat. Myself, I was happy to be the professor. Although the speeches were a mouthful sometimes, with all that scientific jargon. What's this contraption, professor? Some kind of modern art? <laughs> oh, careful, Gilgan. Don't touch that. It's very delicately tuned. Tuned? Well, is it some kind of instrument, then? On a way, it's a weather machine. It's a device to warn us if another monsoon is approaching. Well, so we won't be caught unprepared. Excellent. Right. Last time, Skipper made me sleep outside for snoring, and I almost drowned. <laughs> <sighs> Professor, how does it work? Well, it's quite simple, actually. You see, these palm leaves are stretched to sense minute changes in barometric pressure, and these shells rotate in response to the smallest deviation in wind fields and convection currents. It's just everyday meteorological principles. Brilliant! <laughs> so, if it rains, we'll know. Look what you've done. How are we going to know now if it rains? Maybe when we're getting wet? <laughs> the speeches weren't hard to memorize. The real trick was looking it all up in the encyclopedia so I knew what the heck I was saying. Jim Backus had his odd run-ins as well. He told us all about a time in Rome when he and his wife Henny were staying at a fancy hotel. Um, oh, do you, do, you, do you want an autograph? <laughs> no, it's not what I want. It's what you want, Senor Owl. Oh, you're Italian. Si. Uh, well, no, thank you, but uh, I'm not in the market. 100 American dollars, and all of this could be yours. Um, well, well, you see, uh, I, I only have five dollars. Cinque. Cinque? For all of this? Oh, no, 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 any insult. Oh, five dollars. Take five, idiot. The Yeah, well, I was hoping you'd think so. No, <laughs> because you've done it again. <laughs> Thank you, Doc. So where are we going tomorrow? We're going to go throw some coins into the fountain of Trevi. You see what you get for five dollars? Hmm. <laughs> Who was that? <laughs> Jim! <laughs> What is so funny? <laughs> but the award for the oddest fan experience goes to Dawn Wells. I was once visiting the Solomon Islands. We were miles from anywhere. Heading for an island with no running water or electricity. No modern civilization as we know it. I was the first non-native woman allowed to set foot on the island of Sulu. There we were met by the family of the chief. It was very pleasant to this stranger. But then his wife came out to see what was going on. Mary Ann? Mary Ann! Oh, oh my goodness! I don't believe it! Oh, dear. This is 
<laughs> something else. Oh, Thank you. As it turned out, she was studying nursing on the island of Haniara and used to come home after school and watch me. <laughs> there really is no escaping it, is there? As for Bob Denver, well, he enjoyed the attention to a point. Bob has always been basically a shy person. And when the cameras weren't rolling, well, he could be very quiet and very introspective. Hey, Don. Kind of early for you, isn't it? You know me, always first call in the makeup room. It's a good thing I'm a morning person. What are you doing here at this hour? You look tired. Mm. My kids and I built a spider farm last night. Couldn't go to bed till we named all the spiders. How are they? The kids, not the spiders. They're great. I, just, I love them so much. We have the best time. And how's Maggie? She's fine. I think. You think? We divorced last week. Oh, I'm so sorry. And so surprised. Things weren't going so well. But it'll be okay. You never said a word. Yeah, I, I didn't want to bring it to work with me. <laughs> you men. What men? You, Alan. He broke his wrist falling from that palm tree and didn't tell any of us. Didn't see a doctor for three weeks because he didn't want to hold up production. I don't see your point. I didn't think you would. My point is, I love you guys. I just want you to be happy. I wasn't. Now maybe I can be. Well, get some rest. We can talk later, if you want. We all had things we kept to ourselves. In fact, as close as we were, there was something I didn't find out about Natalie Schaefer until years later. It'll be wonderful. She had plans to go to dinner with a friend and his sister one night. Uh, you, you two go on. I, I'm really not up for going out. Oh, but it'll be fun, dear. All the right people will be there. Oh, come anyway. Slip into something festive and join us. I don't think so. You, you go on. She's having an operation tomorrow, and she doesn't know if she can go through with it. What sort of operation? A mastectomy. She has no idea what to expect. I, I guess we're both a little on edge. Would you mind if I try talking to her? I don't know what you might say to her, but... Maybe I can think of something. Your brother just told me. I'm so sorry. I appreciate that, Natalie. I do. I just wish I didn't feel so all alone in this. You're not, you know. And you must have this operation. It could save your life. But what kind of life can I have after it? How can I look in the mirror? You can have whatever life you want to make of it. Think of all the other women who've gone through such a thing. And the surgery has advanced so much in the last few years. Back in my day, in the Dark Ages, used to be so radical a thing. They cut so deep. There were women so scarred that they could never feel comfortable romantically again. And they pulled deep inside themselves and stopped living for fear that another man might discover the truth about them. But they survived, and they went on. And if they could get through that, why, you have nothing to fear. 
I know what you're trying to do, Natalie. But what could you know about something like this? She saved my life that night. No, we don't. I don't even want to see you. Hey guys, hey, hey, listen up, folks, listen up. I just want to say that it's been a terrific three seasons. But where do you see the scripts I got lined up for you next year? <laughs> hey, have a great hiatus, everybody. Hey, anyone want to grab a pizza before we run off? I'd love to, Alan, but I have plans. Oh, me too, Skipper. Uh, let's do it when we start up again, and it'll be my treat. Next week. That'll be the day. You still owe me a whole year's worth of lunches that I picked up for you. Lovely. Yes, you <laughs> when we get back, then. Oh, have a good break. <laughs> Have a good time. I'll see right. you. Have a good vacation. I've always loved her work. I've never Dawn, it's Sherwood. I just got off the phone with the network. They've changed their mind about a fourth season. We've been canceled, but, but they promised. Well, they took it back. Does Bob know? I'm calling everyone. I, I have to talk to him. Okay. Hello? Bob, it's Dawn. You heard? I can't believe it. We won every time slot they put us in. We even beat the monkeys. And they dropped us so they could put gun smoke back on the air. Something about the head of the network. It's his wife's favorite show. Can I call you back? I need to see if Alan's okay. Sure. Hello. Alan, it's Bob. You okay? Bob, they can't do this to us, can they? Whether they can or not, it looks like they did. Didn't even get a chance to say goodbye. I know. I know. Shows get canceled. These things happen. When our boss wants gun smoke, we want gun smoke. But even cancellation wasn't the end of Gilligan's Island. No idea the phenomenon Gilligan's Island would become. We all signed contracts that paid us for a few reruns, but then nothing. <laughs> After the cancellation, we all tried to find work. But many of us were so typecast, well, jobs were just hard to find. Some of us went to extremes to recreate ourselves. I played a sadistic killer lesbian in a stage piece. Not many laughs, but actually it was thrilling. Bob? Russ? Come and get it! Coconut cream pie! Oh, coconut pie. You haven't had this since we left the island. Hey. Yeah. How about some pie for you, Bobby? Oh, if you promise not to tell my darling wife. You know, the diet. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> diet. Why don't you tell the folks about the series you got right after ours? Ah, uh, the good guys. It came and it went. And so did I. Right out of Los Angeles. After doing 11 years of series, I felt I had to get away and get some perspective. But we all went through changes. I remarried, and Alan opened a seafood restaurant in Hollywood. I lost my dad and got a divorce the same year the series was canceled. Mm. 
must have been quite frustrating for Tina. After all, the dramatic roles she'd had earlier in her career weren't as easy to get. And she often said that Gilligan's Island hurt her career. What we hadn't known, and didn't know at the time, was one of our friends was facing the battle of his life. Ha! Late again. And you watch. He'll have forgotten his wallet, and I'll have to pay again. <laughs> Just like old times, huh? <laughs> yes. <laughs> over here there. Jim, honey, over here. Are you all right? Oh, fine, I'll be fine. Uh, just ask him to stop spinning the room for a moment, huh? <laughs> there you go. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. There's no way. He fell out of the car this morning. He left it off, but something's not right, Natalie. Oh. Okay, honey. I'm fine, honey. I'm fine. Jim was in the early stages of Parkinson's disease. He used to tell me not to worry. You don't die from it, you die with it, he'd say. His condition worried all of us. Eat your pie, Bobby. Meanwhile, the fans who would watch the show were very confused. You ever watch the show Gilligan's Island when you were a kid? <laughs> sure. <laughs> who didn't? It just sort of like ended. Didn't it? I mean, what do you think ever happened to those guys? I guess they're still out there somewhere. Stranded. It just doesn't seem right somehow. Yeah. They had a point. So Sherwood came up with a television movie. Ten years after our last episode, we shot Rescue from Gilligan's Island. We had the chance to tie up our characters' stories, put a nice little bow on the series, and say a proper goodbye to one another. My only disappointment was that Tina didn't join us. She finally decided to separate herself from the series once and for all. So they had to recast Ginger. The movie was so successful that we did two more. Gilligan, the radio doesn't work. It, it works doesn't different. work. It get works. the work. Gilligan, get the radio. Jim was only well enough to do a cameo in the last one. But his wife, Henny, thought the role would lift his spirits. Gilligan, give me the radio. Gilligan, give me the radio. Skip Gilligan, give me the radio! It's Parkland Blue Jays and the Yankees meet tonight. I stood with Henny as Jim gave his last reading as Thurston Howell III. Well, that's what they do in Peru. And cut! Oh, what then? That's it, then. Uh, I'm done. Oh, Jim, no, you know you'll never be done. You know yeah, that. That's what I Here, you take care of this guy. Oh, thank you. You were wonderful. But was I funny? Absolutely. time we'd work with him and it was they lost three of our dear friends from the island all in the space of two years when natalie died they listed her age as 91 that meant she had to be in her 80s when we were splashing around in the lagoon 
Hmm. After she kept her age a secret for so long, I can't imagine how she let the word get out. When I go, and I don't plan on going any time soon, mind you, I want to make sure that they put my real age in my obituary. You're joking. Why in the world? Because I want to imagine all my friends opening the paper, reading it, and saying, she was how old? <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, darling. We also lost the skipper, and his final request was quite appropriate. To be buried at sea. Dawn went to represent all of us. <laughs> As we commit our brother's ashes and his soul to the sea, which he loved so much. It was meant to be a small private service. Just family and a few close friends. But the reporters didn't let that happen. I'd like to think that as much as Alan enjoyed playing the skipper, and as much as he enjoyed the recognition, he really would have loved sharing the final moment with his fans. <laughs> so we won't be making another Gilligan's movie, not with the original cast anyway. But that's fine. We had a wonderful time. But now I share my memories with my family and the love of my life, my wife, Dreema. I live on an island near Seattle with my dear wife, Constance. I have a daughter named Kimberly. And my son, David, was appointed the first aid coordinator for the city of Los Angeles before he died of the same disease he devoted so much of his time to fighting. David was an extraordinary man. I miss him. I miss him. And Tina has done several movies since leaving the island and is also working to promote literacy in grade schools. She volunteers as a reading tutor in New York City. Acting is my first love, and I've never been out of work since the series went off the air, plus producing, writing, and teaching at my film actress boot camp. But, well, the most important thing is the series gave us lifelong friendships. And while none of us got rich off of it, we certainly are rich with memories. Anytime, Professor. You invented that? <laughs> Neither did I. <laughs> in many ways, we're all still there, on the island, lost in the Pacific, waiting to be rescued. But we're having fun in the meantime.
and 